Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to Canadian Solar's fourth quarter and full year of 2019 earnings conference call. My name is Annie and I will be your operator for today. At this time, all participants and listen only note. Later, we'll conduct a question and answer session. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded for replay purposes. I would now like to turn the call over to Ed Job, Managing Director of Investor Relations at Canadian Solar. Please go ahead. Thank you, Annie, and welcome everyone to Canadian Solar's fourth quarter and full year 2019 earnings conference call. Joining us today are Dr. Shuang Chu, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Yan Zhuang, Acting Chief Executive Officer, and Dr. Hui Fang Chang, Chief Financial Officer. On this call, Chang will provide a brief update, followed by Yan, who will review our recent progress and outlook. Hui Fang will then review our financial results before we open the call to your questions. Before we begin, may I remind listeners that management's prepared remarks today, as well as their answers to your questions, will contain forward-looking statements, which are subject to risks and uncertainties. Therefore, the company claims the protection of the safe harbor for forward-looking statements that is contained in the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Actual results may differ from management's current expectations. Any projections of the company's future performance represent management's estimates as of today. Canadian Solar assumes no obligation to update these projections in the future unless otherwise required by applicable law. A more detailed discussion of the risks and uncertainties can be found in the company's annual report on, fine, uh, on Form 20F filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Management's prepared remarks will be presented within the requirements of SEC Reg G regarding generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP. Some financial information presenting during the call will be provided on both a GAAP and a non-GAAP basis. By disclosing certain non-GAAP information, management intends to provide investors with additional information to allow further analysis of the company's performance and underlying trends. Management uses non-GAAP measures to better assess operating performance and to establish operational goals. Non-GAAP information should not be viewed by investors as a substitute for data prepared in accordance to GAAP. At this time, I would like to turn the call over to Canadian Solar's Chairman and CEO, Dr. Sean Chu. Sean, please go ahead. Thank you, Ed. Welcome, everyone. 2019 was a strong year as our revenue and profit both exceeded expectations. Then we'll go through our business review and outlook in more detail. Given the current pandemic and macro situation, I would like to share with you some of my views and perspectives. First of all, we have been working hard to ensure the health and safety of our employees. This is our top priority. We are also taking all the necessary measures to support our customers and partners in the current market environment while still planning for the market to rebound. Today, solar is already one of the most environmental and economically attractive sources of energy. Innovation continues to drive solar energy's competitiveness. As the cost and performance of storage continues to improve, solar's ability to gain market share in the global energy generation mix will accelerate. In addition to market forces, global decarbonization efforts are intensifying, creating even greater demand for clean energy and solar assets. The current shock resulting from coronavirus will likely interrupt the clean energy transition, but there's no turning back. Canadian Solar has a proven track record of 19 years 
and has established strong foundations to capture an outsized share of the demand growth. We have built a globally diversified and flexible capacity structure, strong customer relationships and bankability, and a resilient business model that adapts to change in the market. Currently, we are also putting in place risk controls to preserve cash and navigate the market volatility. We believe that the robust and conservative nature of a long-term strategy will allow the company to emerge stronger from the current period of uncertainty. With that, I would like to pass the line to Yin. Yin, please go ahead. Thank you, Sean. Uh, let me start with some key messages. First, we achieved strong results for the fourth quarter and full year 2019 with revenue and profitability meaningfully above our expectations. Second, we continue to grow and monetize our operating solo assets and pipeline. We currently have 880 megawatts under operation, 512 megawatts under construction, 3.7 gigawatts in backlog and 11.7 gigawatts in pipeline. We are expanding our presence in regions such as EMEA while solidifying our leadership position in North America, Latin America, and Asia Pacific. Third, we are evaluating the energy business model and expanding previously successful strategies. For example, the Canadian Solar Infrastructure Fund in Japan, which was sponsored by the company, was a successful way of capturing additional value by retaining partial ownership in selected projects we develop. This strategy will increase the predictability and stability of our revenue streams through power sales, O&M, and asset management services. Fourth, we have set up a global team with a focus on system integration and energy storage, which will help to build the new technology DNA of the company and lead the next wave of growth in this industry. It is the natural next step, the next step, as we have the advantage of a strong anchor brand, a large pipeline, and a tight control over our distribution channels. And finally, I'd like to echo Sean's comments. We had a robust start to the year but have started to see more negative, negative demand impact from the COVID-19. Q1 was somewhat affected by the capacity loss in China, and now there is greater uncertainty over demand in Q2 and Q3. However, the recovery is bound to come, so we have kept a fairly wide range for the 2020 guidance. The pandemic is a new challenge, but over the past years, we have learned many lessons in navigating volatile markets. Now, let me go through this quarter's results. On the energy business side, we closed various project sales, while we continued to originate, develop, and finance new projects. In Japan, we closed the project sales of 10 megawatts in Q4 2019 and 56 megawatts in Q1 2020, as cited. We also achieved commercial operation on one project and started construction of another two projects, continuing to build our leadership position in Japan. In the Latin region, we sold a 49% interest in the 370 megawatts portfolio of projects in Mexico that are currently under development to South Korea's largest electric utility, CAPCO, and a leading fund manager, Sprout Korea. We built from the success of our first transaction with CAPCO in 2018 when we sold them over two, uh, 230 megawatts of projects in California. Additionally, we're growing in the commercial and the industrial space. 
signing more PPAs with large corporate take uh, off takers. For example, in Australia, we announced a PPA with Amazon for electricity to be supplied from our 146 megawatts uh, Grenada solar, solar plant. While in Mexico, we signed a 15-year PPA with, the, with the Packaging SA to build a 103 megawatt solar plant in order to capture more of the solar value chain. We are increasingly retaining partial ownership of solo project assets to reduce the lumpiness of the energy business, increase income predictability, and therefore shareholder value. The Canadian Solar Infrastructure Fund listed in the Tokyo Stock Exchange is an example of how we successfully executed on this strategy. Now we are exploring ways to expand this approach in other regions. On the MFS side, Q4 revenue reached $766 million. The underlying gross margin improved 380 basis points quarter over quarter to 27.1%, driven by growth in shipments, especially in the U.S., stable ASPs, and lower blended cost of production. One of the key drivers of Canadian solar sector leading margins is our focus on profitable growth. For example, over the past few years, multi-crystalline modules have accounted for a greater share of our product mix. This leverages our leadership in multi-technology, provides customers with the most LCOE competitive products, and delivers an attractive margin due to the lower cost of production. At the same time, our manufacturing capacity has the flexibility to produce both multi and nono, which allows us to respond nimbly should market conditions change. Given the latest supply and demand dynamics, we have recently shifted some of our capacity over to mono. We also continued to innovate. In 2019, we broke the world record in multi crystalline cell conversion efficiency three times in a row. Our latest record was announced a few weeks ago when we achieved 23.81% efficiency for n type large area multi-solar cells. These R&D activities allow Canadian solar to stay at the forefront of technological innovation as we continue to introduce more high efficiency modules of 400 plus watts. Now let me co uh, comment on guidance for Q1 and full year 2020. For the first quarter of 2020, we expect total module shipments to be in the range of 2.15 to 2.25 gigawatts, including approximately 250 megawatts of module shipments for our own projects that may not be recognized as revenue. Total revenue for Q1 expected to be in the range of 780 uh, to 810 million dollars. Gross margin is expected to be between 26% and 28%. For the full year of 2020, we expect total margin shipments to be in the range of approximately 10 to 12 gigawatts, with total revenue expected to be in the range of 3.4 to 3.9 billion dollars. As we noted, in the press release, our guidance is based on current views given the existing market conditions, which may be subject to change due to uncertainties, including the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We were experiencing strong demand across all regions until the past few days as we started to see some delays in weakening demand. We're closely monitoring and analyzing market conditions we have a globally diversified revenue base and tight control over the supply chain, which gives us significant flexibility and room to adjust to external changes. Our long-term outlook remains optimistic as we continue to execute on our strategy and create value for the company and its shareholders. Now, let me turn over the call to Hui for, the, uh, for a review of our financial results and latest risk mitigation strategy. Kui please go ahead. 
Thank you, Ian. As Xiang and Ian noted, we closed the Q4 and 2019 above our expectations. Total revenues in Q4 were $920 million, up 21% potentially over Q3. The higher than expected revenue was driven by increased module shipment and a stable ASP that tracked above our peers. Total revenues for the full year 2019 were $3.2 billion, down 15% year over year, but in line with guidance. As you would recall, in 2018, we sold several large solar power plants in the U.S. We knew that the sales cycle of our project business was such that 2019 would be lower and more of a 12 year, which we indicated in our guidance back in Q3 2018. The beauty of our business is that whenever our project business was in the field part of the cycle, the MSS business will be strong. As a result, we have delivered profits every year since 2013. In addition, our non-module revenues in MSS increased by 80% year over year, from 238 million in 2018 to 426 million in 2019. This includes sales of system kits, EPC, and O&M services. We see our beyond module revenues as a key top-line driver for Canadian solar. They accounted for 17% of MSS revenues in 2019, up from 11% in 2018. We expect this trend to continue as Yen is pushing the team from manufacturing to technology to roll out system integrated products and solutions, particularly related to battery storage. The Q4 non-GAAP underlying growth margin for the company, excluding the ADCVD effect, was 24.3%, 130 basis points higher than Q3. The improvement was mainly driven by a higher MSS growth margin. For 2019, the underlying growth margin was 20.8%, the highest growth margin Canadian Solar has ever achieved since 2011. While we grew our business, we continue to keep tight control of operating expenses. OPEC, excluding other operating income, grew by 3% in 2019, mainly driven by higher shipping and handling expenses and the labor costs associated to the higher shipment. Let's move on to the liquidity and the balance sheet. Our liquidity and the leverage are both at healthy levels. However, given the macro circumstances, we are taking a more cautious than, unusual, cautious than usual approach. Let's review the numbers. We generated $247 million in operating cash flow in Q4 2019 and $600 million in the full year. We increased our total cash position to $1.2 billion, of which $670 million is unrestricted. We reduced our total debt slightly to $1.95 billion and lengthened the average maturity of our total debt. Bottom debt accounted for 50% of, of the total debt, down from 73% just two years ago. We have no major financial principal repayment due in 2020, as the maturity of the short-term debt is on an annual rolling basis at the Chinese bank, and we do not see any high risk in rolling over those loans. We also have around 3.3 billion in credit facilities, of which only 2.2 billion have been drawn. Our gap EBITDA over net interest expense coverage was at healthy 6.3 times in 2019, the highest level since 2014. As part of our financial discipline, we continue to maintain tight control over working capital. Typically, two-thirds 
of our inventory is in finished goods, of which over 70% is in transit to the customers. At the end of 2019, inventory turnover was 62 days, lower than most of our competitors. Likewise, we have tightened control of accounts receivable, which is currently at 60 days. In 2019, our provision for doubtful accounts was just over 1 million. This is incredibly low for a company of 3.2 billion in revenue. Overall, we have consistently kept a negative cash cycle of approximately 25 days the past three years. Nevertheless, we remain alert on managing risk from every possible direction. To reflect, CapEx in 2019 was 291 million. This was associated with our capacity expansion in Thailand and Yenchen, as well as other factory upgrades. Given the uncertainties in the current market environment, we have decided to be extra prudent in our capital expenditures in 2020 and cancel all non-essential spending. This is why our 2020 year-end capacity is lower than what we previously announced. However, know that these products can be restarted very quickly should demand rebound faster than expected. Given the ongoing volatility in the currency market, I also like to add a word on our FX exposure. US dollar strength relative to RMB benefits our top line and the margin as a larger portion of our revenues are denominated in US dollar while a large portion of our cost base is denominated in RMB. We also have revenue exposures to currencies such as the Brazilian real and the Australian dollar, which have been depreciating relative to the US dollar. Anticipating these currency fluctuations to continue, we have increased the hedging ratios of those currencies and reduced our risk exposure. Of course, hedging comes with a cost. So we take a balanced approach, that is, willing to run the risk of certain level of loss while keeping the heading cost at a reasonable level. To sum up, we exit 2019 in a strong business and financial position. Our liquidity and balance sheets are healthy and continue to improve. We are actively taking contingency measures to preserve cash and minimize risk exposure in the current market environment. Meanwhile, our business and financial plans have the flexibility to quickly switch gears if and when the global economy recovers. With that, I would now like to open the call to your questions. Operator. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we now begin the question and answer session. And for your questions, it is star one in the telephone keypads and wait for your name to be announced. And to cancel the request, it is the pound or hash key. Once again, for your questions, it is star one on your telephone. Our first question comes from the line of Colin Rush of Oppenheimer. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Um, you know, as you look at the, the initial indications of weakness from your channel, can you be a bit more specific about which geographies and which portions of uh, your sales channel are, are seeing that weakness? Um, specifically, you know, we're looking for a bit more color on the direct sales channel where we know you guys uh, have a defensible position, a little bit of outside margin there. Well, uh, this is Yen and uh, uh, right on Crescent. <laughs> so uh, 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 I think uh, uh, the immediate impacts actually comes from the, the residential market. Uh, we're observing uh, the channel inventory is uh, uh, increasing and uh, the demand is slowing down. So that uh, 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 you know, not, not slow down, but uh, uh, we made we made assessment uh, as of today. The drop off from uh, from uh, Q1 is uh, very low. Uh, there's nothing in Q1, and in Q2 we start to observe something uh, slowing down. Uh, uh, but we know that things are changing. So uh, the residential market slowdown mainly coming from uh, Europe and the U.S. And uh, uh, but that has not material yet in a significant way. Uh, so uh, uh, 
Japan and uh, in Japan, which is uh, the most uh, the most profit comes uh, uh, comes from, we do not see slowdown. So everything is still normal. And uh, uh, okay. uh, the second the second channel is uh, is uh, probably the impact on ITC. Uh, uh, so, but that is the more uh, more about a uh, uh, second half, which is uh, less scary. Uh, some Q2 and some mm, mostly it's the second half. Uh, but uh, we have time to remedy that. We can find uh, other demands. So uh, uh, that's uh, what that's the impact that we are we are observing. Perfect. And then uh, on the project business and your construction timelines, um, you know, have you looked at a priority list yet of which uh, projects may be delayed for work stoppages or you know um, you know shelter in place type uh, mandates? Uh, on a country by country basis, and you know what that waterfall looks like at this point. We're following that situation on a daily basis. Actually, until today, there's not even single solo project construction has been stopped. We even we checked. Uh, we, we have almost nothing in Italy, so uh, we don't know what's happening there. But in Spain, uh, in the U.S., uh, the construction is proceeding without being disrupted with no uh, disruption. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Philip Shen of Ross Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for the questions. Um, you know, I, I know you just shared with Colin uh, what you're observing uh, as it relates to the impact of coronavirus in the markets uh, throughout the world, U.S., Europe. But was wondering if you could share what you expect to happen. So, for example, you guys have experienced uh, coronavirus um, and uh, really effectively um, dealt with it as a country in China. Um, but what do you expect, given the measures that are being taken uh, in Europe, in the U.S., uh, how do you expect, for example, demand to change in Q2? If, uh, never mind the observations today. You know, clearly in the past four days things have changed, or the past few days, as you mentioned in your prepared remarks. But play the game out for us. What does Q2 look like? Maybe uh, from a volume standpoint, are we down 10% or 20% from? I know you haven't provided guidance, but just help us understand how Q2 demand could evolve. Q3 and potentially even Q4. What does it look like uh, by quarter? Thanks, Ken. Well, uh, good question. Uh, this is uh, what we always do. We always uh, try to anticipate instead of being reactive uh, to today's situation. So what, what matters is actually the future. So uh, we're not uh, medical doctors, and uh, we're not very good magicians. And, uh, but uh, I would say uh, I would say solar is probably less effective industry compared to others. And uh, our, uh, our annual guidance already reflected our judgment for the year. And uh, uh, I, I would not say Q2 is going to be fully uh, utilizing our capacity, uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a disaster. So, uh, uh, so I think we're still uh, optimistic about uh, this whole thing. Uh, so uh, we have uh, 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 taken into the consideration, consideration of the immediate impact, the coming impact to the uh, rooftop to the financial market, and also the IT impact to ITC. So, uh, so I, I think uh, uh, we are overall we believe uh, the annual uh, our our assessment of, of the annual demand uh, for the year should be uh, still okay. Sean? Okay. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Did you want to comment as well? Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the situation okay. that, uh, Sorry, I that. that uh, uh, on the ground, and we have made our, we have made our best estimate. Okay, great. Uh, shifting over to some housekeeping questions. Um, was wondering if you could share uh, the number of megawatts recognized in revenue uh, for Q4 and how many megawatts um, were systems. 
uh, it's uh, around. Uh, Hi, this is Steven. It's uh, around one uh, two point one uh, gigawatt for the pure uh, module sales in Q4. Great, thank you. So I guess to roughly in it, uh, I think uh, ASP in Q4 about twenty eight cents. Can you um, uh, confirm if that's right? And then um, how do you expect uh, the ASP to trend in Q1 and, and through the rest of this year? You mean ASP? Oh. Yes. Uh, we've been observing some uh, down, uh, decline on ASP from Q4 into Q1. Uh, however, costs also coming down. So uh, you can see our uh, uh, guidance for Q1, our gross margin. Of course, that's uh, blended between module and project. But uh, I, I, for Q1, our module gross margin is still healthy. Uh, so uh, uh, even with the ongoing uh, situation, um, I think uh, uh, with uh, the uh, the, the graph of uh, uh, competition uh, on pricing, but I think the cost, we're already seeing that uh, sales cost is coming down already last week, uh, this week. So uh, it's going to accelerate. Um, so uh, very quickly you will see that the move on pricing, module pricing, and the upstream uh, material cost will be in parallel uh, uh, reaching the balance. Okay, great. You know, one more big picture, big picture question. You, know, you talked about Yan um, building the new DNA for the company with systems and storage. Uh, was wondering if you could share. You know, when do you expect um, new revenue uh, to come from systems and storage to be meaningful? Uh, are we looking at six months from now? Could it be a year from now? Uh, I'm guessing coronavirus might impact that. But was wondering if you could elaborate more on uh, your comment there about uh, that new DNA for the company. Thanks. Thank you. The team actually is actively working on setting up the value chain for this direction. So uh, uh, it's not, uh, aside from uh, uh, the technology know-how, uh, it also involves the setting up a uh, technology partnership with uh, the leaders in the industry and uh, identify the companies that has the right bankability, but also the cost competitiveness aside from technology um, uh, strength. On top of that, we have to set up an um, economic modeling of this, uh, of this uh, business line. Uh, and besides that, beyond that, also there's legal, there's financing element of this uh, uh, business model. So uh, we're, we're moving pretty fast. And uh, we're closing one deal. Uh, we're on our way to closing one deal. Uh, not for one, because there's certain impact from this uh, uh, coronavirus. Uh, but uh, we're pretty at the pretty uh, uh, last minute of the deal. And in terms of revenue, it will come from it will come in next year, not this year. And uh, in our project pipeline, we have a pretty big uh, 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 pipeline with storage requ uh, requirements. So that will be. Uh, more or less will be our capital market. So that provides a foundation for the company to move, to move fast and far in that direction. Okay, Yan, thank you very much. I'll pass it on. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, once again, for those who ask to, for those who wish to ask a question, please press star one on your telephones and wait for your name to be announced. Next question is from the line of Mark Strauss of J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much for taking our questions. Uh, most, of, most of them have actually been answered, but uh, Wei Feng, a couple modeling questions if I can. Uh, so I understand it, it's early in the year and things can certainly change, but you know, as we stand here today, what are your expectations for mix between the, the two segments this year um, you know, for the, the energy the energy segments, either on a, a dollar basis or on a, a percentage of, of total basis, that would be helpful. Thank you. I think that this question uh, better answered by uh, Yen. Yen, uh, would you please uh, give some color on the breakdown of our total uh, annual revenue guidance? 
Well, from Harvey, we anticipate this question is coming, uh, that, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, we find that a little early to provide that, uh, given the situation right now. Uh, it's so fluid and uh, uh, on both sides. Uh, so uh, uh, we will provide that information when we have more clarity. Uh, maybe in the investors' presentation, maybe a slide later. Uh, so uh, that's not, uh, I know it's not a real answer, but I hope uh, it can help you. Yeah, no, that's fair. I get it. Um, and that's probably going to be the, the same answer for this next question. But, uh, you know, for, as we think about gross margins this year, I mean, you, you've obviously got a, uh, a very strong start in 1Q. Um, you know, you're coming off of, uh, uh, 2019, which is the highest, like you said, for, for several years in gross margin. Uh, do you think 2020 could be even higher than 2019? Or, uh, I imagine it's still early to tell, but, I just wanted to ask. I think uh, 2020 is going to be a, a little a bigger challenge than 2019. I think we all have that consensus. But uh, uh, that's uh, always, I'm the guy, I always have faith and uh, we support it back. So I think uh, at least our business from, uh, from, uh, uh, from Japan and Korea is not affected. And we have locked almost all the orders for Q2. And even for second half, we have almost 50, 40, 50 percent already locked and, uh, uh, demand. And, uh, uh, we assess our, uh, so, so we, when we look at our different channels by different geographic locations, uh, that we realize that, uh, um, uh, most of our, our profit, uh, is, uh, actually less impact, less affected by this, uh, uh coronavirus. Uh, Japan, Korea, and, uh, and the U.S., I think, uh, we have a project already locked and, uh, uh, uh the module deal where we already signed the contract and locked, and for now we don't see a bigger impact yet. Uh, although there's also, of course, there's uh, uncertainties moving forward, but I think uh, the chance for a huge impact on the utility skill project is low for this year, for 2020. Uh, so, uh, so we're still optimistic. I cannot provide you an uh, exact number on gross margin, but I don't think it's going to be end of the day. And also in 2020, we believe China, with uh, more stimulus, I think the government will try to promote the demand side, um, given the, 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 the situation uh, uh, we're going on right now. So we're confident that actually we, uh, the China demand will help uh, to bridge the gap as well. Uh, so it's not going to be the end of the day. Uh, once, again, once again, we believe solar is going to be the, the, the one of the least affected in this industry during this uh, uh, crisis. Hi, Mark. Mark, this is Sean speaking. Uh, I will add some color on the uh, module and uh, on, the, uh, on the breakdown of module and uh, project business. Uh, for 2020, uh, the, on the revenue side, the module and the system, we call MSS, will probably be somewhere around three billion, and the balance will be, uh, will be uh, the energy business. However, um, at the bottom line, it's different. Uh, the uh, bottom line contribution but the net margin contribution from the uh, uh, project side, it could be uh, larger, uh, or uh, at least in part, with the uh, module and system business. Now, all those numbers are non gap and there will be some uh, uh, cancellation uh, between the two businesses. So, and I hope those numbers give you some indication for your modeling. Okay, very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jin Liu of CICC. Please go ahead. Hey, hey, management. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, my first question is still uh, coming with the demand. So uh, you have just mentioned the, the Q2 capacity is already secured and 60% of the second half is secured. So may I understand that like 75% uh, of our four-year guidance uh, is already secured? And, uh, but the, I would still like to know if you can share some color on our recent new order flow, whether we have, uh, some difficulty signing new order if we, we see the coronavirus impact on the transportation. Uh, and my second question is on the gross margin side. We, we are seeing a very amazing gross margin in the fourth Q and uh, we are improving the gross margin in the first quarter, uh, this year. So, um, may I understand a little bit more about the, 
the breakdown on the gross margin, whether it's coming from the, we, we see a solid AST in the first quarter, so whether it's coming from the, the product mix improvements, uh, if we uh, have more mono modules in the first quarter uh, than before, wh wh whether it's coming from this part or whether it's coming from the cost reduction, as you mentioned, the sale price uh, decline very quickly, or it's coming from our like in-house production cost uh, reduce. Yeah, that that's my two questions. Okay, okay, thank you. So for the first question, I I, I think I I need to make a little correction. So I said for yeah. Q2 <laughs> we already 100% 100% booked, but actually yeah. we lost some order in Q2. So uh, our oh. capacity utilization for Q2 is not 100%, uh, but it's not a uh, it's not a heavy loss, so it's still okay. Mm. Uh, uh, so uh, so over the year for the entire year, yes, we're like a 70 75 percent of the book. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, that's true. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, demand wise, uh, uh, we're we're still optimistic. We're not uh, seeing any disasters, and uh, we're still be yeah. uh, uh, we're still be uh, healthy. Uh, uh, so uh, with good volume. And uh, remember, look at the last year's volume was 8.5 gigawatts, and this year we're, 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 uh, guide, we're got our guidance is between 10 to 12 gigawatts, a major growth uh, with the market that could be similar uh, market size. So, uh, so, so, so it shows our confidence uh, uh, to the market. Uh, it's pretty uh, uh, healthy. And uh, the second question is for uh, Q1. Uh, um, so we do have a, 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 Japan, a project from Japan that we sold and recognized. And that is a, a, a decent, uh, uh, has a decent profitability. Uh, however, although the module uh, part, uh, uh, the, the overall gross margin of the company is actually boosted by the, this project from Japan, but module gross margin is still about 20% in Q1. So it's still uh, very healthy. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that uh, uh, answers your question. Hi, John. I think you also ask it about transportation, right? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, there are some uh, a little bit chaos that some countries uh, uh, close the port today and then open it tomorrow after a heavy protest. For example, it happened in Brazil. I also I'm told that it also happened in India. Uh, but fortunately, we're not shipping that much to India as well. You know, uh, different government, uh, it's kind of panic, so uh, things can happen. Uh, but we have experience to deal with that kind of roadblock or uh, roadblock, you know, uh, or uh, that kind of stuff in China already. Uh, usually it takes a few days, a week, and then people come to sense. They realize that, hey, cargo doesn't really uh, uh, like carry virus, uh, it's the human. So uh, I think uh, it's kind of laughable, but it, 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 it does happen, and it already happened. But I think those are going to be a short-term uh, impact rather than long-term. Okay, yeah, I understand. Thanks, John. Thanks, yeah. That's all my questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of John Segrich of Dominus. Go ahead. Hey guys, um, thanks for the question. I'm just wondering, can you give us an update on your share buyback program? Looks like you bought a little bit in December, but how much have you bought to date, and what would you expect to, to complete the plan by? I'll leave that to Hui Feng. Hi, uh, thank you, John. This is Hui Feng. The uh, Stock uh, buyback program is still going on. Hello. You there? Hello. I think uh well, I'm starting from another location. Uh, <clears throat> we, 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 we probably lost uh, him, but John, I can give you some update. Uh, yes, we uh, executed the buyback in December. Uh, we also executed recently. Uh, that's, uh, we are looking at it, the market. You know, the purpose is to, number one, to support uh, the share price 
to a certain level, uh, and number two, to uh, buy back when the uh, stock price is way below the book value, so we can create value for the shareholders. So yes, we are executing uh, the uh, buyback program. And for the details, uh, we can wait uh, uh, until uh, if we don't uh, come back to one, then we can uh, we can have more discussion as well. Okay, thanks. It's back. Thank you once again to ask a question. It is part one on your telephones, and wait for your name to be announced. Next is Alex Lee of UBS. Please go ahead. Thanks. Uh, I got two questions. One is regarding to the module price. Uh, so, what's your view uh, on the module price across the year? Uh, do you think if there's any chance that the module price need to be cut a lot to stimulate the demand, uh, given the coronavirus situation? Uh, and the second question is about the module technology. So, uh, as you know, that the uh, larger size of waiver is applied across the supply chain. Um, so, do you think there could be some major impact from from the larger size of waiver and sell? And what what you are doing to prepare for the potential change? Thanks. Okay. So, first question: uh, pricing. Uh, actually, I think we're seeing out of the Spaniac, we're already seeing the bottom. And uh, actually, I'm seeing a rebound uh, moving into second half. Uh, so uh, the demand is actually uh, uh, some of the volume demand will be sh uh, shifting from uh, a, a sec first half into a second half. So it will create certain uh, a certain surge, demand surge uh, uh, against a better capacity. So uh, uh, so a bankable capacity. So. Uh, 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 this is what we are observing, and we are observing. We we believe most of the volume, uh, most of the volume this year will. Uh, I would say 70% of the volume this year will only will be owned by shipped by top five uh, multi manufacturers. So this is uh, what is happening. Uh, so being part of the top five, uh, so we we still see uh, enough demand uh, that is uh, um, there for us. Uh, so. Uh, so uh, uh, and also the China projects, the 40, meg, uh, 40 gigawatts of China projects will, ma will be mainly in second half. So uh, that's why uh, we believe uh, price is uh, uh, at least stabilized and may go up uh, into second half. Hey uh, Alex, uh, I would like to address, address the uh, technical question. The first question is mono versus multi. Uh, as, ma as a matter of fact. But statistics shows that in 2019, we had higher, uh, significantly higher, or meaningfully higher gross margin in our market product, in the mono product. Uh, Percentage-wise, you know, we provide some numbers. We shipped uh, way more than, we shipped like 70% multi versus 30% mono uh, give and take. And our average uh, margin in multi is still higher than mono. So, uh, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, as long as you, you, are, you are the leader in certain technology, you can demand uh, um, good margin. You know, in this case, we are one of the only leading player in high power multi, so we do demand uh, high margin. But meanwhile, we also ship uh, very good and high, high quality amount of products to certain uh, markets. So uh, those products also help us to uh, to uh, uh, get uh, more than 20 percent growth margin uh, in uh, 2019. So that's in the uh, in terms of uh, uh, mono versus multi. We also ask it the, about the wafer size. Again, as a matter of fact, Canadian Solar is uh, the driver of the new wafer standard. For example, uh, we were the first one to introduce so-called high high cool product, which is based on the 166. Uh, millimeter wafer size back in 2018. At that time, nobody has been doing it. Canadian sold its first one. That new product also it's also it's also one of questions we can get a uh, re re relatively high growth margin in 2019 than many of our peers. So you are right. Uh, technology and product uh, is on technology, and the innovation is our DNA. Uh, 
you probably know that some other company uh, recently are promoting even larger wafers. But I believe uh, there's a limit of uh, wafer size and module size, and uh, the module is not uh, the bigger the better. Uh, you still have to, to be able to handle it and to carry it uh, to uh, in the uh, installation uh, site or even uh, on, you know, to the to the rooftop. So uh, there has to be balance. We believe all solar modules uh, strike the right balance between high power uh, and uh, installation efficiency and uh, also uh, also uh, uh, good safety. Uh, like health and protect the health and safety of installation uh, workers, uh, and also uh, okay. yeah, okay. actually, actually, you need to balance uh, between the benefit of a bigger panel and the cost adder on uh, maintaining the reliability of the module itself, and also the tracker, and also the possible cast order when the workers have to slow down their movements on the installation. And uh, so there's a lot of factors you need to worry about. And uh, this, uh, if wafer is too big, too thin, then upper stream have a little benefit, in which they will not uh, be able to, they may not be willing to pass it on to downstream. And the downstream guys need to invest capex to rebuild the cell line and the module line. So, so it's it's still about uh, um, efficiency and uh, LCOE, and that's about just the size. Okay, got it. Very clear. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Thank you once again to ask a question. It is part one on your telephones and weekly need to be announced. For your questions, please press star one and weekly need to be announced. No question at this time. Now I'd like to turn the, con the conference back to the uh, management for closing remarks. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, and thanks uh, for everyone to join the call. And if you have any further questions, uh, you can uh, reach us uh, through email or, uh, or uh, telephone to our, uh, our department. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the conference for today, and thank you for participating. You know all this connect management. Please uh, do stay on the line. I'll take you back to the next call. Thank you.